السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Speak about the first item namely prayer from Islamic wise as we said before this related to the outer okay when you speak about outer what surah in Quran is going to, be, uh, to fix your outer? They are Surah Al-Baqarah. Okay, Surah Al-Baqarah is the, the surah to fix your outer. Some pe per, uh, scholars, they say, you have 1,000 commands on it and 1,000 prohibitions in, the, in, in Surah Al-Baqarah. And it's going really, I, I look for, whenever you are good practitioner of Surah Al-Baqarah, you are going to fix your outer the way it should be fixed. Okay. And here, when we want to take it for prayer, for sure we should set, uh, set up our prayer to be on time. Okay, this is one of the obligations, to have your prayer on time and to fulfill the obligations. The idea I try to look at, you have obligations, according to some madhabs like Hanafi and you have compulsory and then you have highly recommended or tradition or sunnah or something that you are highly encouraged to do even these scholars that they did not say compulsory namely Shafi and Maliki both of them they have certain actions that they are much more important than the others so what i'm trying to say you should put in your mind that in your prayer you have three levels first, first level is going to invalidate the prayer if it's not available if it's a prohibition whenever it's done it's going to invalidate the prior prayer okay or what we say commands and prohibitions we have the second layer or the second way. These matters, they are too important and you need some compensation for them. Whenever you miss them, you should compensate. The third one, they are recommended to be done, but this is not, uh, they are not going to invalidate your prayer whenever you don't, don't do them and there's no compensation for them. The first one, which is the most important one, you have some of those practices or actions, they are going to be not included in the prayer per se, and we call them conditions, or in Arabic language we call them shurut, okay? Then you have something which is included in the action, or inside the action, we call them as pillars or arkan. These they should be fixed very well. We should be aware of them. I would rather say, many famous scholars, they said, at least in our day, you should have your prayer most of the time, or all the time, valid according to the former's house. That's why in my mind, you have this famous Hanafi scholar, Ibn Nujayim, he has a letter, Risala, he combined in it or piled it the obligations accord, according to the former's health, the compulsory, if there's some, and the recommended thing to be done. And this is just, I, I take that message from him as indirect way of, you should look for, for this, you know, in your mind. Not being, you know, I learned, you know, according to Hanafi Mazhab, that I go by Hanafi Mazhab and I don't care about the others, okay? You should care about the others. And this is, has been summarized in a rule mentioned in many books of Fuqa, Al-Ihtiyatu Fil Ibadati Wajib. To be in the safe side, you know, in your worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a compulsory. Okay, you should be in the safe side. You should be, whenever you have any doubt, to take away the, the doubt by certainty. 
If we want to have a common look, I may not be able you know, to go in detail on you know, all of these mazhabs, but in common look, uh, look, the least number of obligations they are going to be in Hanafi mazhab. And the largest number they are going to be in Shafi'i mazhab. And we have the other two mazhabs, you know, they are intermediate. Why we should look at this, okay? Because in my look, I might be right or wrong. I'm sorry to say, 90% of people, you know, nowadays, their prayers, they are not valid except according to Hanafi mazhab. This is my opinion, okay? I may be right, right or wrong, okay? But I look forward to have my prayer valid according to the four mazhabs. Being Hanafi doesn't mean that I don't care about the other. No, you should have it. Especially, especially for those who learn fuqah. Especially when you have your mazhab contradict with the three mazhabs, okay? This for me is going to mean a lot, okay? And even though I fully believe in that particular opinion of that particular person, but I should fulfill the other's ideas, you know, in these matters. And this is taken from the prophetic tradition. Once a person came to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, got married, he loves his wife a lot. He said, Oh Rasulullah, a black woman came to us, telling us that she has breastfed my, me and my wife. And she is a liar. This is a person statement. The Prophet ﷺ said, divorce her. Ya Rasulullah. He said, كيف وقد قيل? And this has been said. This is, should affect all of, all of us. Imam Shafi is great Imam. For the Hanafi, it has been said. Okay? You, you, the Hanafi person, this has been said that this is obligation. Whether you believe in it or not, the Prophet said, كيف وقد قيل? How come? And it has been said. Let's apply it at least to our prayer. And I think this is the main reason why that scholar, Hanafi scholar, he put all of those, yeah, mentioning the obligations and the compulsories and the recommended actions, you know, according to four methods. Okay? Really, he admired me a lot, you know, in that Risala and in the, that uh, brief book or uh, summary. And really, I feel it's important. And I keep hearing, you know, about some of our shiuch who used to be, to lead the prayer, you know, in, in his mosque, even though he's Hanafi, he will not touch his wife whenever he wants to go to, to prayer. Why? Because this is a break of wudu, not according to Hanafi, according to Shafi. You got my point? And here, you should ha this should occupy part of our practice. Okay? When, when it comes to some contradictory, then you go by one opinion. When all of them, they say, well, and this is most, in most cases, you are going to find this must have said obligation, the other one said compulsory, the third one said recommended. Okay? They are going to go in the same flow. That action, this must have said it's going to invalidate your prayer. The other one, he said, doesn't invalidate, but you need sujood so The third one said, it's dislike, you know, but you don't have to. Okay, again, you put it under consideration. I'm not going to broaden my spoke, talk, you know, about it, but it goes by what we call adab al-ikhtilaf. The etiquette of difference. I'm sorry to tell you out of my experience, I may be completely wrong. Nowadays, I don't see it. Many of the Muslims, they, read, they don't have this etiquette. They don't have this adab. We are here, you know, after hundreds of years to criticize. How come Sayyidina Ali has this problem with Sayyidina Osman? How come this companion had that problem with that other companion? 
To be honest with you, this is my feeling, I may be wrong. I would like our people nowadays to be in their, when they get along with each other, the way they used to be when they have difference, difference in opinion. Because, because you see, the complete way of respect and acceptance and uh, have the same way of getting together and we are completely opposite. Who is the most happiest one you know about this position? A shaitan. This happens in the presence of the Prophet The Prophet was about to get out and tell people about what? About Laylatul Qadr. He was about to get out and tell them about Laylatul Qadr. What did happen in the, the mosque? Two persons, they have some dispute or they, their voices start to get up. And the whole day the Qadr was lifted up. You see? Yani I cannot express my... If this happened in the presence of the Prophet ﷺ, how bad we are, you know, when we... No, don't put your shoes here, put it here. Okay? I'm sorry to tell you, and this is what I tell my people back in Syria. Many of us, you know... <laughs> They don't have the word, you know, at house, you know, they cannot change a coach or coach from one side to another, cannot turn the, the light on, or, and they try to dictate what, what in, his, in the mosque, you know, the house of Allah. Since he is completely out of charge, you know, at his house, you know, he tried to show himself in the house of Allah. And I'm sorry to tell you, this is really, I feel it's bad. Nowadays, back in Syria, you hardly have any maulid in the mosques, you know, because of the events and the incidents that we have. We have this maulid, great, was great maulid, you know, a mosque next to my house. Really, I'm not here to speak about it, but I would like to mention because I feel bad about it. In that maulid, the people, they were almost to fly. They got really crazy, you know, and they got, yeah, I love this. Why do I love this? Because I would like to see people, you know, have their own connection with the Prophet I'm really sorry to tell you why we are in this position. Two persons enter the mosque. Because by this position, I told them, let's make Adhan and Isha, this after Maghrib, make Adhan and Isha when the time of Isha, and we are going to delay the prayer of Isha for a while, yani, till we finish the Mawlid. Two persons, they entered the mosque, or if they were sitting there, I don't know. In the other side of the mosque, they started the prayer. And after that, you still have some of those people sitting on the chairs, you know, they. They start moving one after another, joining that prayer. And a fitna was created. I'm sorry to tell you, everything was gone away. To be honest with you, I don't like it for myself in that moment and that reaction. Because alhamdulillah, this is a favor from Allah. I experience it in my house and else, in someone else's houses. But for those people, you know, the common people, Really, I feel it bad because we are about to fly and the shaitan was smart enough to send someone, create fitna and make everything lifted up and gone away. I bring this story not because of the story. I bring this story just as a lesson for me and for everyone. Even though you feel this is needed, even though you feel this is a must, even though you have this experience or that, whenever the outcome of it is going to be much worse, please don't do it. Okay? Have some wisdom, you know, to delay it. And for me, this is the main factor. And it starts, where does it start? By my practice inside my 
my heart okay look at your heart do you have to, do you love the four imams do you love abu hanifa shafi ahmed and malik or not when you pray do you observe this imam or you have always dispute you know inside your heart no this you are you have the dispute all the time in your heart the one who has this practice Firstly, his salah, inshallah, will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but this is not the most perfect one. And secondly, he is not eligible to speak with the others, you know, about get along and have a decade of adab al-ikhtilaf or whatever. And I'm so sorry to tell you, in my experience, as Muslims, we are really bad about it. Alhamdulillah, not in the U.S., but elsewhere, you have even mosques, you know, of different sections, you know, and that person will not enter this mosque, and that this mosque, this person will not enter the other mosque. You see, we, we are really bad, and this is even though I'm going to go outside of my talk of the subject, my subject, you know, but because it it hurt me a lot, I'm going to speak about it. I'm not going to speak for long, but I'm and this. But I'm trying to say, find it in your prayer. Firstly, when you pray, don't say, I'm Hanafi. Say, I'm slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I would like to have my prayer accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one has the guarantee to give you this acceptance, but one way of giving this acceptance is by what? by making this prayer, at least from outside, accepted according to the four mazhabs in our time. You know that the Prophet ﷺ, toward the end of his life, he got sick. And he assigned Sayyid Bakr Siddiq to lead the prayer. We read in Bukhari that on Monday, what the name of Monday, that the day of the death of the Prophet ﷺ, while they are in Fajr prayer, I know that the disease of the Prophet, the sickness of it was quite severe on him. And that's what has been described as it. So I imagine how the Prophet ﷺ get up of his bed, went all the way to the window, lift up the curtain, observe the people praying behind Sayyidina Bakr al-Siddiq. Then he put down the curtain and returned back to his bed and he passed away after a few hours. What action is this? What's the point of this? This is my analysis. I may be right or wrong. The Prophet does know that he's going to die. And he's going to be asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how do you leave your nation? He's going to answer, okay, I observed them, you know, in Fajr prayer, they are all in a communal, you know, prayer, you know, or gathered to each other, you know, praying behind one imam. When we do our attitude, you are Hanafi, I'm not going to pray behind you, okay? You are Shafi'i, I'm going to pray behind you. You are this, you are that, okay. Does this fit with that hadith? When the Prophet ﷺ had this burden, you know, to get up, you know, from his bed and after all of these activities, just to say, oh Allah, I left them together, you know, all, all of them together pray behind one imam. Does this fit it? One day the Prophet ﷺ, Send nine persons who read it in Sira for certain tasks. Eventually, these nine per persons, after a while, two came from the east, one from the west, two from the south, one, you see? The Prophet got really angry. He said, I send you all together. How come everyone comes from a different direction than the other? I think we may have the same question, you know, addressed to us. The Prophet may say, I have let you, all of you, you know, pray behind one Imam. How come nowadays, you know, 
you came to me, you know, with different... <laughs> you, you never entered that mosque, you never prayed behind this person and you name it. You got my point? And here, when we speak about the altar of our prayer, we should fulfill all of those matters that I looked at, okay? And whenever you, I am quite good and successful in doing this, in my imagination, this is going to fix many matters that I will not be able to fix, okay? If my inner is the worst ever, and I start to have this good adab from outside, I have no doubt that Allah subhanahu is going to fix my inner. Allah subhanahu is going to make it much greater than matter. Okay? Why? Because I work hard. I'm a very bad person. I work hard. You know, I try at least from outside to make myself, you know, accepted, you know. And for sure Allah subhanahu is the most generous one. And whenever I have it accepted from outside, it's going to be accepted from inside. You have this famous companion scholar, Sayyidina Abu Abu Mas'ud. He's very intellectual one. He has some opinion, focal opinion, and he's going to be proud of them. <coughs> one day he was in Mina during Hajj. And the Khalifa at that time he prayed four rak'ahs, which is not the way the Prophet ﷺ prayed or Abu Bakr or Umar. He prayed four rak'ahs. Said, now Allah Sa'ud got really angry. How come he prayed, prayed four rak'ahs? You know, it's too bad to pray four rak'ahs. This is wrong. Then, after one minute, said, now Allah Sa'ud start praying. How many rakas did he pray? He prayed for rakas. According to his governor, governor. When he makes it up, they ask him, How come you prayed for rakas, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud? He said, Listen to this one. He said, Al khilafu shar. You have difference in opinion? It's really bad. Even though he thinks completely that he should pray to rakas, Yet he prayed for rakas. Why? Why did you pray for rakas? He said, Al Khilaf Shar. Okay. So please, my feeling, I may be completely wrong. The one who did not fix this point is not going to reach the point of Ihsan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us you know, reach the point of Ihsan. But there's certain rule down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should go according to these rules. We should love each other. We should get along with each other. We should highly respect each other. We should come to the point that they are common among us. I'm not telling you, just smash yourself, you know, and take all of these differences away. No. These differences as described by Sayyidina Al-Qasim, a scholar, you know, of Medina in, uh, during the, ta uh, the time of Tabi'een, he said, اختلافهم رحمة واسعة. This a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you have the difference of opinion. Just imagine if all, everyone you know wants to perform the hajj in the same pattern nowadays. What's going to happen? They are going to, to, to kill each other. This tell you physically how merciful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he made this difference in, in opinion among, among the, the scholars, I highly respect your opinion. I don't want to smash you and I tell you, no, this is the way you should go, okay? No, I'm here to tell you, just be, have the adapt, the etiquette with the others. Get along with each other. Keep up what we are doing. From where did you take it, you know, Ya Sheikh? I'm not Sheikh. I took it from Bukhari, okay? The Prophet ﷺ gave instruction to his companion after the ditch battle 
whoever believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the hereafter, don't pray Asr till you reach Bani Quraidha. Some of these companions, they prayed Asr over on their way. They said the Prophet is the last man to hurry up and go quickly to Bani Quraidha. It did not mean to delay the prayer of Asr. The others, no, they kept the apparent meaning you know, of it and they prayed Asr in Quraiza after Isha. The beauty about it that the Prophet did not blame or condemn one of the two parties. Okay. Such event in the life of the Prophet I would like, I love because we are in need to collect all of those, those similar events and speak by full mouth saying this is the tradition of the Prophet okay. The tradition of the Prophet may come from one hadith, from one narration but may come from your understanding of the behavior of the Prophet and that's why I keep saying, you know, telling you or telling myself the Prophet used to minimize, to diminish the amount of obligations, the number of obligations and the number of prohibited matters to the least, giving them, you know, after being at, at that bottom, they give them the most important care, then leave the room open, you know, for those nafila or other, other regulations. As we should have the same behavior. And this is mentioned in the Hadith Qudsi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and this Hadith Qudsi relate to our subject, you know, and we should try to understand it very well, you know, to understand the subject. Allah subhanahu wa said in that hadith Qudsi وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِ وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِ بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مَا فِتَرَضُ You'll never get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by one anyway much better than fixing your obligation. Very good word, you know, fixing obligation. If the Hanafi person, you know, he had his prayer fixed completely according to the instruction of Hanafi. Did not care about the other. And we have Ibn Nujayb who mentioned, who is Hanafi, you know, a scholar, famous scholar, you know, in Hanafi. He fixed his prayer according to the four mazhabs. Obligation-wise, compulsory-wise, recommended-wise, and you name it. Who do you think is more perfect or more qualified in his prayer? The first one or the second one? The second one, that's what I hear, you know, something second, you know, okay? And I have the same feeling. And here, all of us, we are in real need of getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the best way of getting closer to Allah, or this is the best way as mentioned in this hadith, to fix your obligations, okay? So, to have it according to the four methods, especially prayer, let's start with prayer, it's much better than to have it, you know, the most perfect way in one method. That's why those actions that I may go over them, you know, quickly, I'm not going to specify this obligation or not or whatever, you know, let's all of us, you know, try to fix them. We have conditions, you know, for prayer, purification, okay? Purification, namely, to purify your body, purify your place, purify your clothes of any dirt, okay? All of us, you know, we should be well aware that you have three items, they may come with each other, may, may, may differ with each other. You look at purity, tahara, related to your religion, you look at cleaning that people they like or dislike, okay? Yani when uh, you have mud, you know, on the carpet here, will not be like, you know, many, many, many of us. 
when I have a dirt on my face, this will not be like, you know, by some people, and you name it. Then you have the sterile one, which is speaking medically, medically okay? And here, you should have the three look. The religious one, the communal one, and the medical one. They make it mixed with each other, and you may have separate, you know, separate among them. The urine may be sterile. No germ there, no bacteria, but religiously and communally, look at it as something you know, dirty. You don't like to have it. That's my point. And here, please don't let anyone you know fool you, fool you by saying, "How come you know it's prohibited to eat pork? How come it's prohibited to drink wine while they may be completely sterile?" <clears throat> and they are good for your health, and they may do this, and they may do that. Tell him, regardless of all of these matters, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said they are filthy. Whether I know why or not, they are filthy. Please connect the spiritual matter with the physical one. A person came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He start eating without saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. He said, the Prophet see, see the connection. He said, you would like to have a very dirty animal eat with you? He said, no, Ya Rasulullah, that <laughs> dirty animal eats with me. He said, much worse than this has have been eating with you as shaitan. Let's have this look, okay? We are Muslims. We are not here, you know, to speak about materialism only, okay? We have something hidden from us. In some occasions, it may, may be much more important than the, what we look at. And that's what has been summarized by this hadith, for sure. If you ask me, do you like to eat poison? No. No, I don't want to have, you know, I don't want to die. I, okay. When I eat haram food, or I earn my, my, my money from illegal way, by interest, by this or that. Yeah, I got re really rich, okay. I'm, I'm going to eat this food, you know, this not. But this is halal food, slaughtered, you know, by the Islamic way. But I earn my money from illegal way. This is going to be more as a poison for me than eating the poison itself. You take it from the story from Sayyidina Bakr. Really, I admire this story. I mention it frequently. I'm not going to waste. There's no waste of time you know, by mentioning. But one time, eventually, the Prophet uh, Sayyidina Bakr Siddiq, he ate a food, you know, and apparently was not that legal, you know. Usually, whenever he come to his house, his own house, will not eat any food till ask from where did you bring that food. One day, for one reason, either he was tired or uh, was hungry, because they may experience hunger, you know, many times, many, many occasions, he just stopped eating. After finishing eating, <laughs> that boy came to him, do you know from where did you eat? No. I met Kahana. Kahana is prohibited, you know, according to them. That means some expectation, some future look, you know. I met Kahana to some people, you know, which I'm not good in. And eventually it happened, and they met with me and gave me that food that you ate. Oh my God. You see, the heart of the Sayyidina Abu Bakr is like the pure one. When you have very clean window here, if you have the least amount you know of dirt there is going to be shown up if you have very dirty glass you know or window even if you put uh, a full cup you know of dirt you know in it is going not going to be shown up you know because it's dirty already you got so here Sayyidina Abu Bakr has the main concern about it. If you ask any scholar or mufti you tell him you are excused you know because you ate without knowing 
This was the Sayyidina Abu Bakr don't know. He induced, induced vomiting by putting his hands inside, he induced vomiting. What did he say? He said, if it's not going to get out without being dying, dead, I'm going to, to let them get out. You see? This is excessive and very severe, very strong, you know, command from Sayyidina Abu Bakr. And he sounded much more knowledgeable than the physician. What did he say? Oh Allah, excuse me about what the visit they have as we absorb, you know, inside. Why? Because he's concerned about his heart. He doesn't want to, to have some traces, you know, of those death, you know, on his heart, which is going to affect his prayer, his recital. We, we don't care, okay? And here, what I'm trying to say. In this practice, please connect your practice. I'm not speaking about Ihsan. Many people, they may feel that this is Ihsan. This completely has nothing to do with Ihsan. Okay, I'm not speaking about Ihsan. I'm speaking about Islam. Whenever you speak about any spiritual matter, many persons, they say, think that you have bypassed, you know, Islam and Iman speaking about Islam. This is not the case. Really, we are way down, okay? Yeah, and those people who are in Ihsan, they are going to laugh at us, you know. These are kids, you know, this kindergarten, okay? They are still down. They need a long way, you know, to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We suffer a lot. We don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't trust Allah. We don't have confidence in Allah. We don't, we don't love Allah and you name it. We say we love Allah. We say we are confident in Allah. But all of our practice, they are way against that meaning. Why? Because we don't know Allah. Because we are way down, you know, of knowing Ihsan. As a Muslim, whenever you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, you are entitled to have the connection between body and soul. Physical needs and spiritual. This has nothing to do with Ihsan. Okay? And we should look for it. I spoke a lot about food. And the way it's applicable for food, it's applicable for all aspects of your life. And in particular, your prayer. Whether I know it or not, the Prophet ﷺ said, whenever you face the Qibla, you want to start prayer? What? You face Allah subhanahu. Oh my God, this is quite great. This is beyond my imagination. Okay. It has nothing to do with Ihsan. Again, now you are facing Allah. When we start reciting, you are speaking with Allah. Oh my God, I'm speaking with Allah. Then, You'll have the answer from Allah. You have conversation with Allah. You make prostration. You are in the closest position to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You make a tahiyyat as narrated in some book. You are, for sure, you did not make mi'raj. But in one narration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is your mi'raj. You have done mi'raj. And you are going to speak in this mi'raj the way the Prophet be Abi wa Ummi spoke with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet did say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did say, Assalamu alayka ayyuha al-Nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The Prophet reminded all, remembered all of us, Assalamu alayna wa ala The angel they said, And who are you? I am the most lousy one, the more, most dirty one. I pretend that I'm going to make myself good. And I enter the mosque and I start praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his generosity and mercy and kindness and you name it. Of all of those holy attributes and names that I, I may know some of them and I don't know most of them. Enable me to stand. 
Enable me to face him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Enable me to speak with him. Enable me to be get closer to him. Enable me to be in the position of Mi'raj when the Prophet Sallallahu did speak with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not eligible of all of these matters. This has nothing to do with Ihsan. This is just to connect the physical practice with the spiritual one. When I hear, well, let's leave it, you know, because we'll come to it in Iman, you know, that, that point. I'm not going to mention this statement now. If I still alive, you know, and I come completely, I'll speak about it in Iman, okay? But here we are speaking about purification. From outside, you should purify your body, your clothes, your place. You should be in state of wudu. You have the minor and the major hadith, you know, and uh, all of these matters. We should, these are conditions. Besides that, we should set up the other conditions. What are they? Time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna salata kan al mumina kitaba mawquta. Okay? Nowadays, most of us, not most of us, some of us, they miss their prayer. So what? I was up, you know, till 2 a.m. For sure you don't expect me to pray Fajr. No, I expect you to pray Fajr. Because you have an appointment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This appointment has been set, you know, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not from your side, okay? You don't have choice here. You should keep up your appointment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so what's wrong? You know, I'm going to pray, pray it whenever I wake up at 10, at 9, at 8. You know, I'm going to wake up and make wudu and make very perfect prayer. Sorry, you missed the appointment. And when hadith about fasting, and this may be applicable to prayer also, when you miss the appointment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you keep praying, you know, till the end of your life, they are not going to be equal to those two rak'ahs, you know, very, very slight, very uh, light rak'ahs that we have done in, the, in their time, okay? What I'm trying to say, Please, 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 all of us, including myself, at first, okay, keep up the time. The timing, this has been designated from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see how great is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We know for sure, these five prayers, they were about to be how much? Fifty. Just imagine if a person like me is going to pray 50, 50 prayers, you know, to Allah. I was about to say 50 rak'ahs. No, 50 prayers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala per day. I'm a very bad man, okay? Does this deserve, is this equal to the greatness of Allah? No. To be honest with you, in my heart, I have this feeling. If, you, you, if I keep, I'm going to keep praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 24 hours, this is not enough for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what the Prophet said. He said, وَلَا يَشْبَعُ مُؤْمِنُ مِنْ خَيْرٍ حَتَّى يَكُونَ مُنْتَهَاهُ الْجَنَّةِ It's going to feel, you are not going to feel enough or full of this matter, you know, till you, till what? Till you have the real appointment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what I'm trying to say, Many of your activities, you know, in this life, they have been designated for you as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala care about you, as a training to what you are going to face later on. Okay? When then you are going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This mission the Quran, Yarjuna Liqawana. One day you are going to speak with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One day you are going to have conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One day you are going to experience the closest position to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you name it. You see how great? 
Just imagine if you have a person, you know, without any training, and he's got, has been shipped or taken right away to have this position. Is it going to be efficient the way the one who spent 70 years, you know, training himself, you know, to speak with Allah? Just I'm speaking here physically, in my judgment, it's not going to be equal. When you gather to make salawat or to recite burda, this is the way I feel it. I may be right. You are in as a tra training position or sitting, how to sit with the Prophet. Okay. Those who ride horses, you know, they are in the sitting. If they are people of heaven, they are in the setting, you know, to train themselves how to ride horses, you know, in the hereafter. And whatever occupy your heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is absolute. He may have some exceptions of that, but this is the common rule I look at it. Whatever occupy your heart here in this life, even though you are, you are inshallah, you'll be one of the people of heaven, you are going to experience it there. That's why, yeah, this is really touched my heart a lot, you know. That's why you have this significant difference, you know, between, between people, you know, there. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, say, said in the Quran? Look at them, how you have this difference and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave reverence to some people you know, over others. To be honest with you, when I have a person, you know, sitting there reciting Quran, crying, I feel jealous of him. When I have a person, you know, enjoy his prayer, I feel jealous of him. When I have a person, you know, has fasting nafina much more than me, I don't have any. Okay, I'll be jealous of him. Well, <laughs> this is my experience in the past, you know. I return back from Medina this, uh, this morning. If I hear someone they went to Medina, I feel as if I haven't been there for 60 years. Okay. What is this? Because all of those matters that I have spoken and many, many other matters that I may not know all what I did not speak about it, they are Firstly, they are the most noble time in your life. Example of it. I hear in my ear many voices. Perhaps the best thing you know to hear in your ear when you have the Quran recited. I'm not going to speak spiritual now. I would like to speak spiritual, but I'm going to speak physically. I came to know this story you know, recently. You have a committee. All of them, they are non-Muslim. And among them, there is, a, there is a sheikh. I don't know. Some of the audience, they may know much better than me. They have some instruments or tools, you know, to measure the flow of the voice. And they are too interested in it, you know, because when you have the voice come, the tone of the voice comes up and down and whatever, it's going to be really too annoying to the, no, to the ear. So they have their way, I don't know, it. I'm sorry, I, this was shown to me, you know, in the internet that this is what happened. And this is by the Sheikh mentioned. And they try to make the songs, you know, measured by this way just to make them close to perfect one out of their fun they went to have joke you know with that sheikh they said why you don't bring something from your side he said yes i'm going to bring you something he brought a recording of al husari famous reciter of quran from egypt what did he say i believe him what did he say the best song it took 80% this recording of Quran it took how much? 100% 
for sure Husari is careful, you know, and recite the Quran, but this tell you how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the miracle of this Quran, you know, not only in the meaning, not only, only in the wording, by the tone, by the voice, how it goes. I may not, you know, when I recite, I have 100% because something wrong with me, but nothing wrong with the Quran. Okay, so let's take it physically. That's mean when you hear this voice coming. I shouldn't compare, but it's going to be completely different than anything else. Whether I understand it or not, this is what mentioned. When Sayyidina Musa heard the warning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he hated to hear any voice after it was about to close his ears, you know, and I doesn't like to hear anything after it. So, if I, I want to take it for my life, as I said before, I have heard a lot. A lot of voices, a lot of ugly and good one or whatever. But what is the most luxurious time, you know, in my life? When I hear this voice, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it available for me. For those people who did, did not know Allah, it took 100%, you know. Same thing, I spoke about in the ears, speak about the eyes, speak about the spell, speak about the taste, speak about the food. Yeah, really, I cannot explain it. I cannot understand it. Narrated in the Bukhari, Sayyidina Allah Masoud said, We used to hear the tasbih of the food while we are eating it. Oh my God, ya Latif. Now just imagine someone put a piece you know, of food in, it, in his mouth. Make it tasbih. Okay, now what I'm trying to say. Look at all of those difference in practice and difference in qualities. In all of those portions of your body that get involved. Ear, eye, smell, touch, taste, food. These are the outers. I feel the great difference that I feel myself, you know, I'm incapable, you know, of explaining to the audience what, what do I mean by that. When you go to the inner, we are going to find much more difference of it. Right? Why much more difference? Because at the beginning of my talk, what did I say? You will never find anyone, anything you know, or anyone equal to 1,000 except in the humankind. And for sure, this is not come from the food style or the clothing style or whatever. It comes from the inner, from the heart. Okay. When we go a little bit further, you know, to the, uh, the, the hereafter, you find it. When you move a little bit forward to receive the actions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you remember they say, Nothing similar or resemble Allah subhanahu wa to be honest with you, when I have this fact, you know, in my heart, really I'm going to feel bad. I'm going to feel too poor, too blind, too deaf, haven't eaten at all in my life, haven't prayed at all in my life, haven't done this or that. What should I do? I should, should put myself down? I'm not sheikh. I'm not scholar, I'm not knowledgeable, I don't know anything about the spiritual matters, but in the meantime, I encourage all of you and myself, ask Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would like all of you to ask Him. If I'm successful today 
to, to convey to you what's in the market of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take this as a signal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifested to you some of the goods that he has to try to buy, if you have money, you know, to buy these goods, you know, or to ask Allah and beg, be a beggar, a beggar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh, Allah, give me, I don't have any money, you know. And this is part of what the Prophet ﷺ described about that person, okay? I think all, in all of our life we should have as such. This is the last person to enter heaven, as mentioned in Bukhari and Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him stand there. Wish, to be honest in, with you, in this life I cannot imagine it. Keep pushing, wishing, wishing till it stop. You know, have you have you seen anyone stop wishing in this life? I haven't seen. You see how great is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? Fulfill all of His wishes, you know, which beyond my limit and what. what. But the beauty about it was it. What is it? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala keep reminding him. We have this. We have that. Okay. Give, as if he's marketing, you know, as, uh, uh, no need of marketing. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make tanazzul. Marketing his goods to the people. Why? First to know about them. Second to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Third, those who among us who are good, work hard, you know, to have it. Okay? So here, if I mention something of these matters, you know, just look at them as marketing from Allah. Don't look at them, this is impossible. This is not going to happen to me. I'm not of that figure. Okay, whenever you put down the curtain, you know, and close the gates, you know, in front of you, this is maybe the end of the story. And I don't like to have it, you know, happen to any of you. One time, <laughs> Habib, I keep getting, getting out, you know, of it. One time, the Prophet ﷺ visited a sick person. It's narrated in Sahih Bukhari. He said, لا بأس, لا بأس So, no problem. This is inshallah to purify you. What's the meaning of this? How great is this person to have? Uh, what, what great opportunity he has, you know, to have the Prophet ﷺ visiting him? Yani, you have the full mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa entering your house, sitting there speaking with you. Yet, the Prophet ﷺ had the most kind wording, you know, there. What did that person say? Aslahahullah. He said, Tawr, بل حمى تفور على عبد على شيخ كبير تزيره القبور. You see the the gap in the expectation. No, this is boiling fever on an old man to make him go to graveyard. That's what you want. The Prophet said, "Okay, that's it." <laughs> what I'm telling you, you have some chances in this life. You have some opportunity. Get the maximum of it. Don't be dumb, don't be stupid, you know. I think all of you are smart, you know, to, to find the best way, you know, in this life, you know, when you have two companies, you know, one give you this seller, the other one's going to give you ten dollars, you know, more than the first one, you'll go to the second one, you know. You are too smart, you know, in selecting. When you have fine food and not otherwise food, you know, you are going to go by the fine and you name it, you know. And here, I look at it, and uh, it's the case, you know, whenever you pray, the, you have some manifestation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some marketing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some invitation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inv yes, invitation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps saying, you know, the Quran, Ya Ibadi, Ya Ibadi, where are you? Ya Ibadi, give the answer, reply Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you should get the maximum of us. Okay? And that's what I would like to see in my life. So just last word, you know, I'm sorry, I was not able to speak about Islam. Just the idea, they give the fuqa about it, and I was about to mention the condition, you know, I'm sorry, did not have time, you know, uh, emphasize a lot of 
important is about the time of prayer what I would like to end my talk you know by about Islam they said the compulsories to complete what has been missed from the obligation because I may miss the obligation by not knowing them and the sunan or recommended matters you know to complete what has been missed in the compulsory. See how great is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants all of you to, to success, you know. And this way, one way of success, it may make it as simple, as easy to have the least amount of obligation. He made other actions, make them compulsory or highly recommended. Why? To perfect your prayer, to cover up what has been deficient there. Yet, some of us, they may have still deficiency, and these deficiencies are going to be covered how? By the sunnah prayer that you make, or whatever. You see, you see how great if Allah, is Allah, to be honest with you, if I'm going to designate it myself, I'll not be able to do it, okay? But you see this designation from Allah, even the hereafter, you are going to be counted as, as such. The first thing to be recorded about, you know, the hereafter is your prayer, Whenever you have deficiency there, it's going to be covered and completed by what? But your, by your, your nafila. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala sahbihi. Allah khairan. Jazakum Allah Inshallah, we will be uh, breaking right now for lunch. Um, we should be returning uh, for Dhuhr over here at 1.30. And the program will continue until Maghrib, bi'ithnillah ta'ala. Um, if you have any questions, I started receiving some questions, inshallah, during uh, next session uh, after the hold, we'll start going over some of the questions and continue with the program. Jazakumullah khairan. We encourage for the students over here, if your parents would like to join after the hold, they're more than welcome. Um, so please invite your parents along with.